you're thinking. I've always wanted to make a space butthole. Well, you're in luck. This is the episode you've been waiting for. But also, a lot of you requested this shot from the promo of our universe pack that we released earlier this year. So today we're gonna show you how easy it is to create this entire shot, including making the ship from scratch all inside of After Effects. Plus, we'll expand the sequence using stock footage and a little bit about rip reels and pitching. Wow, look at us. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab one of the planet environment assets from our universe pack. We'll drop this into a new comp, then we'll make it a 3D layer and create a new camera choosing 24 millimeter. We're choosing this wider lens to give more distortion on the 3D layer when tilting or panning the camera. Though for our shot, we just want very subtle motion. So we'll keyframe orientation at the start and end of the timeline to give us this movement, which will follow our descending spaceship. After that, we'll scale up the planet to fill the screen throughout the shot. And I will say off the bat, our list is our partner for today's episode. And if you have that, you have access to a ton of great planet assets there as well, including some with motion that would work great as a starting point. But this shot is another one done by the insanely talented Ryan Thompson. So I can say that this looks badass. And the thing that shocked me most is that he made the ship from scratch using Element 3D, which is insane to me. But for the spaceship, we wanted a simple geometric shape, partly inspired by the Highliner ship we see in Dune, but also inspired by... So Thompson ended up with something which is surprisingly easy to make in Element 3D. On a new solid, we'll add element and jump inside. Now we'll create a torus model, rotate forward, and stretch the Y scale to create a chamber. No, no. Perverted. Then increase the sides and segment values for higher resolution. For the material, Thompson went with this metal panel option from the Pro Shaders 2 pack, altering a few of the settings, including the levels of the glossiness map to get more interesting detail and shine. On the model itself, we'll increase both the UV repeat values to change the texture scaling, which will help with its sense of scale. And then for a more interesting reflection, we'll change the environment map, but choosing something which is still kind of cold and dark to fit with our space scene. And now now we have it. That's simple. A couple of clicks and you get your very own space. I won't keep doing this. I will. One thing I really love about ideas like this and a lot of the ones that we show on the show is how great they are for pitching a project. Yes, creating and putting stuff out there as well, of course, but as we take bigger swings, aiming for larger budget levels to make the stuff that we're really passionate about, creating impressive pitches that really communicate your idea has been the most important thing. So whether I'm conveying my idea to a production company or studio or a private investor to do something completely independent, one of the things that I've learned is that they're really your first audience and need to be moved just like your eventual audience. This shot is a part of the reason why it's on my mind, but Artlist as well. I make a lot of rip reels, but the thing that annoys me about them is that usually when you make a rip reel, which is a fake trailer for the movie you want to make, you're often pulling from films people know and will recognize to get clips to make that fake trailer. And that does distract. So like I showed in this episode here, I try to use stock footage as much as possible. And I have made full rip reels that I did pitch that were made with just artless stock footage, music, and sound effects. Obviously, we use it weekly for the show as well, but using it for pitches has been one of the biggest uses for me recently, including a lot of their AI, which I think I use differently than most, but I'll come back to that. For now, let's get back to the Back in After Effects, in the Particle Look dropdown, we'll increase the size and using the World Transform, we'll change position and rotation until we're happy. Then keyframe these two to make the ship travel toward the planet through the timeline. To alter the shape slightly, we can change the Particle Look Deform setting. Each of these can change the look quite a bit, and we settled on this shape here. In the Render settings, under Physical Environment, we'll keyframe the rotation to change over time to enhance the sense of movement. To pop some extra detail, we can use a few point lights placed around the ship just to catch some of those highlights. And we'll change the strength and color for interest. But make sure to switch off except lights and shadows for the 3D planet layer. And the output settings will change a few things, including increasing the specular. Then using a curves effect, we'll add some contrast, then a fast blur to slightly remove sharpness, then enable motion blur for the ship and planet. To complete the shot, we'll do the usual, add some glows, some lens effects, and a grade. If you want to follow our customized lens technique, check out our Meteor Space tutorial link below for that. But that's it. That's how we got our Space 
And like I mentioned before, it's pretty easy to alter these types of shots with different planet environments, sometimes changing light, color, and position to closer match the planet of choice, as well as altering reflection rotation. But for the rest of this sequence, we grab different clips from Artlist we could place the ship into. There's a ton of very cinematic footage there, like I was showing before, so we just searched for what we had in mind and scrolled until something caught our eye. And again, this is a large part of how I pitch, taking different elements and trying to stitch them together to create something that has more specificity to what I'm actually trying to make. And these AI tools here are helpful for that as well. Now, for me personally, I don't use generative AI like this for my final product, but I do find AI very helpful for the behind the scenes pitch side of things. And it's for the reason I've said plenty of times on the show before. When anyone does a pitch with a rip reel, you're collecting images from existing works to convey this new idea through your deck and clips from other films for your reel. But it's hard to get specific and people get distracted by what they recognize. And if they hate the film that you're pulling from, there's a chance they're gonna be affected by that whether they know it or not. So when stock footage works, it's great, but things like text to image and image to video let you get some very specific touches in there. Like say I need a cow plenty of footage for that, but a blue cow and reading glasses would be harder to find. But now we have it. Then we could feed this image to the image to video and we have motion for our rip reel. Then if I need some quick voiceover, instead of me doing distractingly bad movie guy voice, you can grab this here and... Oh wow, that is a cow. Obviously that's a ridiculous example, but I have been able to get shots done in this same way into pitches that have really helped convey what I wanted to then go make for real. It's just funny to me that while I do use Artlist on pretty much every Film Riot episode, where it has helped the most for me lately is pitch materials that only a few people will ever see. But these different shots of our ship flying is another great example. We're taking stock video and transforming it with our unique element. In this case, this... <laughs> I've done plenty of comping on shots too, removing something I didn't want where the rest of the shot was perfect, adding in simple 2D elements like snow or rain. Just throwing that in sometimes is enough to help merge them into your lane. I've even comped an actor from one film into another one that they weren't in just to try to keep clear character continuity. It's interesting how much work you need to put into making the pitch for the thing that you wanna go make. But say we wanted our ship in these different scenes. First, we're gonna 3D track the footage, then copy and paste the element spaceship over changing the size, position, and rotation to match the new camera and angle before keyframing a new animation. For this type of ship and size, we just want slow, purposeful movements. Then to match the reflections, add the base footage as a custom layers texture map, then inside element replace the existing map with the custom layer. Again, changing the rotation values to best match the scene layout and animate to show extra motion. You can also alter the environment UV repeat to add more visual information to the reflections as well as changing the gamma and exposure values, which can make it pop, especially in darker scenes. If the footage has some volumetric fog or haze, you can match this with the fog render settings, selecting a close color and altering the values to match distance and strength to fit the scene. For a couple, we added some smoke stock, which you can get from Artless, on top of either to match what was existing in the plate already or to build up the scene more with clouds and atmosphere. For some, we added a black solid layer set to screen and used Red Giant's Real Lens Flares plugin, linking to a new light layer placed to match the footage. And again, to finish them off, we used glows and a grade giving us this. But that's it, a mixture of ideas, but really just about how to create more specific elements for my pitch. It's what's been rolling around in my head lately. And these ideas work for a pitch of any kind, of course, a film, a series, a commercial, music video. We all have to build pitches at some point to win the job we want. And again, if you're not on our list already, give it a look. You get everything that we talked about in the episode today, but also LUTs, VFX assets, music, sound effects, plugins, and they continue to grow and add features. And they have great plans to fit pretty much any creator too. So you can go to artlist.io or check the link in the notes below. Links to everything we talked about in this episode down there as well. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.